Budgeting and managing your money can be really quite difficult. I found it really difficult for a number of years, even just wrapping my head around what kind of bills I had and how to best manage my money, what I need to focus on and what I need to automate. So in this episode, I wanna share with you exactly how I manage my money. So we're gonna look at how I create a budget for the year. We're going to talk about how I have a weekly discretionary spending fund and basically look at how I manage my different bank accounts as well as saving accounts and what I'm trying to achieve. So this will be an insight into how I've found works for me to manage my money, but this may help for you as well if you've been struggling with budgeting and trying to work out a system that works for you, you might be able to steal some of these ideas. Hey, I'm Ryan from onproperty.com.au, helping you achieve financial freedom. And in order to achieve financial freedom, you do need to get your budget in order. Okay, so let's jump on the computer and we're going to look through the way that I organize my bank accounts. And we're also going to look through how I actually go about setting a budget for a year. So I have a spreadsheet where I put the figures in for the big bills for a year and that helps me to really manage things. So I just wanna say from the outset that this is just one way of doing things. I tried a whole bunch of different ways to budget over the years. I really struggled with a lot of them. I'm not very good at budgeting. This one I found works for me for the primary reason that it automates a lot of the decision making. It automates saving for all of those bills that come up during the year. Everything from your regular monthly bills like phone bills, internet, car insurance, stuff like that as well as saving for those bigger bills that come up less frequently. We're talking car registration, we're talking health insurance. For me, it's private schooling as well because my kids go to a Montessori school here in Sydney now. So it really automates all of that so I don't need to think about it. And then I can just focus on how much money am I spending each week and then I can focus on my business and earning extra money. So let's go ahead and jump on the computer now and have a look at how I arrange my bank accounts. I will just say before we jump into it, I am recording at my mum's house today, so you'll see the kitchen in the background. It's a little bit messy, but check out this view of Cronulla. Absolutely awesome, mum's got the best place. And I think it goes without saying that this is not to be considered financial advice. This is how I manage my bank accounts. What you do is up to you, and seek professional advice if you do need help. Okay, so, here we're looking at my bank accounts, all right? We've got the two bank accounts up the top, the pot and everyday spending, and I've blocked off how much is in them for privacy reasons as well as the account details because I know so many of you out there will send me millions of dollars if you know them. Jokes, obviously, no one's gonna do that. But just for privacy reasons, I've closed those out. So I've got two main bank accounts that actually have cards attached to them. So these ones I can actually go out and I can spend money on, I can pay bills on, and then I have online savings accounts as well, which you can see here, Splurge, Holidays Happiness, Fire Hydrant, Big Bills, Savings, and the $1,000 Project, which we'll talk about all of those as well. So basically, the way that it works is that all of my income goes into the pot. So I call it the pot because it's like a big stirring pot. Everything goes in there and everything kind of comes out of there as well. So my income, which gets paid weekly from my business, goes into the pot. From the pot, I then have automatic payments set up to send money where it needs to go. So automatically each week money goes from the pot into the everyday spending account. So the everyday spending account is where I actually spend my weekly money. So I have a weekly discretionary budget. I did an entire video on that, which I'll link up in the description down below. But this is for things like petrol, groceries, clothes for myself or for the kids, um, going out, entertainment, all of that sort of stuff, even presents would fit in there as well, except maybe for Christmas. So each week I have a set amount of money that I'm allowed to spend. And so that money on a Sunday gets moved from the pot into everyday spending. And so then what I have is just one card with everyday spending and on my phone, I've got an ING app that can show me exactly how much money's left in there. So I don't need to add things into a budgeting app. I don't need to track things. I have my everyday spending account 
each Sunday that gets renewed. And when I log on to ING, I can see how much is left for the week. So there's no guesswork in how I'm going towards my budget. And if I go over, well then my everyday spending gets declined and then I have to make a decision what to do, where I'm gonna pull money from or if I'll just stop spending for the week. Money also goes from the pot into these different savings accounts. So big bills is to pay for the bills throughout the year that are less frequent. So it'll pay for things like car insurance, it'll pay for things like registration, it'll pay for school fees, it'll pay for health insurance, that sort of stuff. So basically, I work out how much that's gonna cost me per year, and each week, a set amount goes into big bills. Fire hydrant is the amount of money that I'm putting towards paying off debt, as well as once debt's paid off, that will be going towards investing. Holidays and happiness is putting towards holidays or things that are going to make me happy. Splurge is just things that you can splurge on. And then um, this savings account I don't use, but I've set it up. And the $1,000 project is things that I do outside of my regular budget to generate little chunks of income I put into there. And then that's gonna be used to either pay off debt or to invest. So let's go ahead and have a look at how I actually work out how much money is gonna go into each of these accounts by doing my annual budget. So here we have the spreadsheet, and this is the spreadsheet that I use to work out how much money I'm going to be spending throughout the year. And then as a result of that, I can work out, okay, well, how much money do I need each week? So the idea here is that you go through and you fill this out, and it's gonna give us a weekly and an annual figure. And for most of us, that needs to then line up with obviously how much we are earning. And so that's the goal here is you, you go through this and you move stuff around and you work out, can I afford to live and where am I willing to spend my money? So you got things like rent here, um, weekly rent. So let's say maybe $500. I've moved to Sydney now. I've got three kids. School fees, if you pay for private school, then you can put that in. Registration for cars, that might be $1,000. Electricity, maybe $50 per week. Uh, insurances, probably another $1,000, I guess. Car servicing, at least another thousand. Health insurance, if you have that, you can go ahead and put it in as well. Phone and internet, you can put in that. A lot of people spend about 100 bucks a month on phone and internet. I think I spend more like $30 and $40 per month. And then as well, you can go through, and these are the more discretionary items. So you got your investing, you've got your saving. And so Barefoot Investor recommends that you put 20% towards that. So depending on your income, you could then adjust your interest and savings. But let's just say for this one, we're gonna put $500 a month, so $6,000 per year. Uh, we can also put money aside for holidays and things like that. So for holidays, I think I was doing you know, $50 per week putting aside, um, I don't, how much is that per year? 2,500, 2,600, okay? So let's say we're doing that, okay. And so basically this is going to give us a total bills figure and these are our big bills that we're saving towards. Then we've got our weekly expenses as well and how much are you going to be spending each week? Now, if I was a single person and didn't have any kids, then this could be a really affordable figure if I wanted it to be. So somewhere probably around, I would imagine oh, $200 or something like that. I've got three kids, so let's call it $500. So we're talking petrol, we're talking food, we're talking clothes, we're talking pharmaceuticals if someone gets sick, all of that sort of stuff. So. $500 per week, and then that's gonna give us our total here. Now that total should ideally be equal to or less than income after tax, or less. So then what we're gonna do from this to make things automatic, it was we're going to look at our weekly expenses, and we're also going to look at, yes, the total bills, but more so where money needs to move. So back into ING, we saw that my weekly expenses is $500. So I get paid from the business, I send money across on Thursday so that I know it arrives in my bank account on a Friday. And then I have the transfers each week, resets on a Sunday. So what I then do within ING is, and you can do it within any bank account, is to set up automatic transfers. So automatically on Sunday, from the pot to everyday spending, 
$500 is going to move across there. So as we saw, weekly spending was $500. So each Sunday, it's going to move across there. We can also look at this spreadsheet and see that rent is $500 per week. So each Sunday, rent would then be paid automatically via bank transfer to my rental manager. So $500 would go across to them. Then as well, we have money saving into big bills. So the total of this column here, which at the moment is about $155. So $155 would go across to big bills. Now I have, I pay for private school as well. So the money that I need to move across to big bills is actually higher than this. But yeah, you would work out your amount and then basically each week you would move that money across into big bills, okay? You would also move the money that you wanted to save for your holidays into holidays and happiness. You would move the money that you wanted to use towards paying off debt or investing into the fire hydrant. And this is in line with what Barefoot Investor talks about. So the splurge, um, he calls it the smile account and the fire hydrant are in line with that. So if you want to understand that more, I will link up down below to my Barefoot Invest Investor bank accounts explained so you can understand that in more detail. But yeah, so each week, Money automatically goes from the pot into my everyday spending. This is where I focus on my weekly discretionary income. And also money moves into my splurge account, my holiday savings, my paying off debt or investing account, as well as saving for big bills. And that is basically how I manage my money. Everything moves across. I just live off the everyday spending account. And then when a bill needs to be paid, because these ones down here are just online savings accounts, I can't actually send money to other bank accounts. So big bills will accumulate over time, become bigger and bigger, and then a big bill might come in. So it might be health insurance, or it might be school fees, or registrations up. And so whatever the amount of the bill is, I will transfer it from big bills back into the pot, and then I will pay money out of the pot. I do also leave some money in the pot because things like car insurance come out by direct debit. So I don't move that into big bills, I just kind of leave some extra money in the pot to make sure that when car insurance comes out, there's money for it there. But as you can see, everything is basically automated with the exception of what I spend my money on each week. So yeah, so that is how I manage my finances. I hope that this has been interesting and insightful to you. I know it kind of sounds pretty complicated, and it was, I guess, it's not super complex to start up and to get running, but it did take a few steps. But now that it's up and it's going, it's really easy. And as my life changes, it's really easy to adjust as well. So at the moment, I'm not paying rent, so I just canceled that rent payment. At the moment, I am saving to pay off debt, so then that payment is actually higher than what it previously was as well. So more money is going towards paying off debt than is going to my weekly discretionary money than in the past. So I can adjust those things. I, I just simply go in and adjust those automatic transfers and change them to what I want them to be. And yeah, that is how I manage my finances. If you enjoyed this video, then please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Also go ahead and check out the videos that I talked about, the one on my weekly discretionary budget, where I talk more about that as well as the Barefoot Investor Bank Accounts Explained. I'll link those up in the description down below so you can check them out. Or go to today's episode, which is on property.com.au forward slash 630, and I will link up over there. So if you're listening to the podcast, on property.com.au forward slash 630, and that will link to those other two videos I talked about. Really key to get on top of your finances this year. This is something that's worked for me. If you've been struggling with managing your money, managing your budgeting, then this might be something for you to try as well. I wish you the best in your personal finance journey and your journey towards financial freedom. And until next time, stay positive.